Hello everybody and welcome, I am Bricker Boom, and we're gonna do another bug challenge because it's been a little while. Today we're gonna see if we can beat the game with nothing but a Butterfree and a B Drill. Either calling this run Butter Drill because if I remove two letters it becomes a very awkward name, or we can call it B Free. Looking at Butterfree, you can see it's more of a special attacker, but one thing about it is the fact that it has access to the main status powders that will probably help us a lot, specifically Sleep Powder and the ability Compound Eyes. Beedrill, on the other hand, is a physical attacker with great access to bug-type moves and honestly great physical moves overall. Honestly, I'm pretty sure we can win this challenge, but I think it is going to go ahead and take us a while because at the end of the day, they are still bug-type Pokemon, they evolve very quickly, and their stats leave something to be desired at the end of the day in comparison to, oh, I don't know, say everything past the first or second gym. We're going to give the rival Charmander, or in this case Charizard once it evolves, because between it having access to powerful flying moves and powerful fire moves, I think this will be the most difficult for us to take down. For this particular run, we decide to open up with Butterfree, who has an impish nature which lowers special attack while increasing defense, which is literally worst case scenario for us. Now the good news is, as I was saying before, we have compound eyes, meaning our powders will probably never miss. With the Lab Rival battle, we open up with Confusion, and that does about a fourth of damage, and Charmander uses Growl. We continue with Confusion, taking it well below half as we get hit with Scratch, and then take it down two turns later. After that, we have to finish up the beginning game stuff before we can round out our team. We end up finding a Weedle with a relaxed nature, which increases defense and lower speed. Overall, not a horrible nature, but I would have preferred something that raises attack, especially with the lower special nature on our Butterfree. Either way, we go through the forest, making sure to level each of them up to get ready for Brock. Given the fact that Rock Tomb will in fact wreck us, defense boost or not from our nature, we'll need to make sure that we have access to ways to at least stall him out. We do go ahead, double back to the rival fight, and he sends out Pidgey and we start with Butterfree using Confusion. Tackle isn't doing too much, and Confusion is able to make it a 3-shot with plenty of HP to spare for us. Charmander is up next, we use Confusion, and just like Pidgey, it's a 3-shot, winning us a fairly simple battle without even needing to send Beedrill out on its debut. With the optional rival battle done and over with, we can go ahead and attempt to fight Brock and cross our fingers. So with the Geodude, we open up with a few Poison Stings, however it's not doing much, but we get the Poison status that we wanted to. As the Poison begins to tick away, we then start defense curling for the next six turns. Thankfully, we don't get punished too badly, and when we go on the offensive, we also connect and take it down. Next up is Onyx. Onyx, we get super lucky with the poison right away, as it sets up bind, and we're both dealing the chip damage. We get taken down to 1 HP with Rock Tomb, but we've done quite a bit of damage. After that, we can swap to Butterfree, get binded again, and then say night night as we knock it out with confusion. Now, I will say that that did take two attempts, but overall I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. It isn't often where I can just use Harden and tank attacks for a while. Couple that with the fact that I was able to poison both of his Pokemon, and it turned into a, a long battle, but a victorious one. Now we can head through Mount Moon, and hey, while you're traveling, if you haven't yet, you should subscribe to the channel. I took last week off kinda sorta to post my review of every single Gen 1 Pokemon that I've posted as my shorts for the last probably 4-5 to five months. Also, if you've commented on the sound quality of my YouTube videos before and you happen to be listening, has it gotten any better? I've adjusted my sound recordings, my sound pads, my mic, and basically everything else I can think of. Now through the cave, we have to be careful with our power points because confusion isn't the best move. Fury attack likes to miss, and then poison sting is just incredibly weak. Through perseverance, a few restarts, and master chef and critical role as a distraction, we make it through the cave and this portion of the script. Cerulean City, and we have the option where we can either fight the rival or Misty, so we try the rival. The rival first sends out Pidgeotto, and we open up with Beedrill, and get hit with Gust down to 24 HP, doing pitiful damage with Fury Attack. 
We get taken to two whole HP and fire back with Poison Sting, then immediately get taken down. With Butterfree, we do take it to red, but it takes us out. Maybe Misty will be a little bit better. And it only takes about 30 seconds to realize that was a horrible idea. We have no way of surviving the bubbly onslaught that is Staryu and Starmie using Water Pulse. Now, unfortunately, we don't have too much of an option, and we do end up having to level up. We need some extra speed, and we need the extra firepower. At level 16, we can start whittling away the Pidgeotto with Fury Attack, and Gust is still hitting us pretty hard. We do manage to take it to about half HP, so to get rid of the accuracy drop, we swap over to Butterfree. Thankfully, we can outspeed Charmander and put him to sleep, and then take him out with two Confusions. We swap back to Beedrill with Abra and take it out with Fury Attack and then do the same with Rattata. We spend some time going through the route above and there's a reason for that. In a few levels, and given how quickly bug Pokemon level up, we can get Twin Needle, and while it isn't the best move, it is super effective damage and we have a pretty decent attack stat. With Misty, Staryu hardens, but Twin Needle still takes a below half. After that, we can tank a Water Pulse before taking it out. Next up is Starmie, and we get hit hard with Water Pulse down to 24 HP. We can take Starmie to yellow and poison it, taking it a bit further. Thankfully, Misty doesn't heal, and you see her HP tick all the way down to 4 HP before we can take it out and move on. Now, as we go through Vermilion and then head on to the ship, we're actually going to go ahead and go fight all of the additional trainers that we can think of. Between the two attempts that it took Brock, and the fact that we had to level up to get past the rival and Misty, I'm not wanting to take too many chances, but in no time at all, but thankfully some more levels under our belt, and it's time for us to fight the rival again. Pidgeotto's first, and we open with Sleep Powder, and then batter it with Confusion, only dealing with Sand Attack in the meantime. We swap to Beedrill upon Charmeleon's release, and open up with Twin Needle, not doing very much damage, but only getting smoke screened. We swap back to Butterfree and get smoke screened again, then put it to sleep. After that, while it's asleep, we swap back to Beedrill and start using Twin Needle, and then when Charmeleon wakes up, it uses Growl. We get Embered all the way down to 7 HP, but we took it out. With Kadabra, it immediately takes us out, and we swap back to Butterfree as we trade Confusions, before putting it to sleep and spamming Confusion until it goes down. Last is Raticate, who tail whips, bites a few times, and then goes down. A short journey to grab Cut, a Diglet for the cutting, and an annoying trash can puzzle later, we can go ahead and challenge Surge. Surge opens up with Voltorb, and we use Confusion to take it to about half as Sonic Boom hits us for 20 HP, as it always do. We low real bad on the damage next turn and not knock it out. Surge heals up, so we make Voltorb go to sleep and then take it out a few turns later. With Pikachu, we put it to sleep, and Confusion takes it below half as Surge uses a full heal to wake it up before it takes the unconscious kind of nap. Last up is Raichu, and a shockwave knocks us out, which is mm, fair enough. We send out Beedrill, and it begins using double team, so it does take us a while to hit. However, on our final Twin Needle, we actually poison the Raichu, and the poison damage takes it out to win a fairly simple, albeit stressful, battle. With Surge out of the way, the game is about to open up in a big way for us, however, we have a bit of a challenge ahead. Rock Tunnel has a lot of Rock-type trainers, which we use Butterfree for. We also have to use Beedrill for the few Slowpokes that appear, and it's a bunch of dodging trainers where we can, but there's a surprising amount of mandatory trainers. Either way, though, we make it through and pick up Return, because we're definitely going to need it. We then head to the game corner, making our way through and then going to Giovanni. He sends out Onyx, and we start with Beedrill, realize that's a mistake, and then go to Butterfree as Rage does a whole 8 HP of hit point damage with a crit. Psychic takes it to yellow, and Rage does even less, and the next Psychic takes it down. After that, it's time for the Rhyhorn, and we can take it to yellow as a Stomp hits before the next Psychic takes it down. Last but not least is Kangaskhan, and we swap over to Beedrill, who gets punched right in the face for more than half its HP, as Twin Needle barely chips away at it. Bite takes us to 24 HP, and Twin Needle takes it to half, but still no poison damage as another Mega Punch takes us out. We swap to Butterfree as Tail Whip hits, puts it to sleep, and then take it down. Oh! Oh, we get knocked out when it wakes up. Huh. 
attempt two, and not too much different to cover. We just go ahead and sleep strat everything, and then mentally destroy it with Psychic the best we can. Kangaskhan does knock Butterfree out, but we swap to Beedrill, poison it with Twin Needle, and that's that. After that, it's a quick trip back to Lavender Town because I forgot to fight the gym leader again. It's fine. I'm not upset. Rival time. Sleep Powder puts Pidgeotto to sleep and it goes down in two confusions. Charmeleon we put to sleep, then knock it out with Psychic. With the eggs, we either put the main egg to sleep or all of them. I'm not sure which. Then swap to Beedrill and knock it out with Twin Needle. After that, we can thankfully outspeed Kadabra now and take it down as well with Twin Needle. Gyarados Intimidate hurts our attack, and we realize after a few Twin Needles, we're just not doing enough damage, and the output from the Gyarados is definitely wrapping up. We swap over to Butterfree, put it to sleep, and then finish it off with Psychic. We can go ahead and finish off Lavender Tower, thankfully not getting wrecked by Marowak, and with having that done, we run back to Erika's Gym, since we kind of forgot about that when we were last here. Victory Bell's first, and we use Return to take it to not quite half as we get Spored. Acid does a pitiful amount of damage, and we use another return, taking it out thanks to a crit. We swap to Butterfree with Tangela, and Psychic takes it to a red as it only sets up in green. Erica heals up once, and two Psychic later, it goes down. Last up is Vileplume, and we can take it to below half with Psychic and get Stun's board. Acid barely touches Butterfree, and we break through Paralysis to take it down. Now that we're halfway through the game, I have a feeling we're going to be hitting a brick wall really soon. The problem is, Koga has very tanky Pokemon, or we can go to the rival in Sylphco, who has mostly evolved Pokemon, and I don't even want to bring up Blaine, and let's not forget Sabrina, who will likely one-shot our Pokemon, but there's only one way to find out. Let's see how we do with Koga. Coughing is a one-shot, which is a good start. For whatever reason, Muck just doesn't attack us at all. It sets up Acid Armor, which is good for it, I suppose, but it also spends a few turns minimizing, but Butterfree is out for sludgy blood and takes it down. The next coughing also goes down to one shot. Weezing is the last Pokemon, and we can take it to half and lower its special, get taken down to 50 HP from sludge, and then just end its career. That actually went a lot smoother than I thought, especially with Muck. If it had attacked, we probably would have gone down pretty quickly. But if that's the case, let's see if we have some of the same luck against the rival. And if you're paying close attention to the footage, we can't even put up a fight. We can usually take down the Pidgeot, but given the fact that Flamethrower is 100% accurate, we are left with nothing but two little charbroiled bugs. Blaine is the same issue. Let's be honest here. At level 50, we can put Pidgeot to sleep, hitting it with two Psychics before it wakes up and hits us with Wing Attack, but we do take it down. With Charizard, we put it to sleep, try Silver Wind, just on the off chance for a quick Omni Boost, then swap over to Psychic. We can take it to low yellow, but Flamethrower is an immediate one-shot as it wakes up. When we swap to Beedrill, we thankfully outspeed and can take it out. With the Execute, we can actually take it out in one shot as well, avoiding any status powders. And then Alakazam goes to red, only sets up Future Sight, for some reason, and then goes down. Now it did also set up Reflect, and between that and the Intimidation drop, we're not doing too much damage with both Twin Needle and Return, and Gyarados is swapping between Bite and Dragon Rage, and we get punished by the Future Sight as well, but somehow through a miracle, we managed to stay alive long enough for the Reflect to wear off, and that allows us to take out the Gyarados and move on. A quick heal up later and it's time to fight Giovanni and Nidorino gets taken down with a single Psychic. Rhyhorn goes to red, misses its attack, and then goes down to another. With Kangaskhan, we can do about a fourth of damage with Psychic and get hit with Mega Punch and then put it to sleep. We end up critting it with Silverwind to take it to red as it only uses Bite. Then we get a second critical hit in a row, taking it down, and after that the Nido Queen is a quick two Psychics and with that the battle is done and over with. Alright, I had a feeling that we were going to need to level up soon, and it's less surprising that it's against the rival, so we head over to Sabrina, cross our fingers, and hope that Twin Needle is going to be enough of a threat. The first Kadabra goes down to a single Twin Needle. Oh, so far so good. Next up is Mr. Mime and Twin Needle takes it down as well. 
Alakazam is up and sets up Calm Mind, which is horrifying. Thankfully, Twin Needle is able to take it out without a second thought. That only leaves us with Venomoth as we swap over to Butterfree to land a Psychic one-shot and win the battle. Alright, middle of the game was a bit rough, but I think we're on a winning streak here. We go to Cinnabar, clear that out, take out the trainers of the gym, etc, etc. With Blaine, we send out Beedrill first as we take Ralph to red and get hit hard with Fire Blast. We then take the Ponyta down with a critical hit, we do take the Rapidash to right about half and then get hit with Fire Blast to take us out. We put it to sleep as we swap to Butterfree. We do try Silver Wind, but Blaine does heal its sleep, so we just put it back to sleep and knock it out with Psychic. Arcanine is last and we put it to sleep, deal two Psychics, lowering its special on the last one, and then take it out with the third attack, winning us a very lucky third attempt. The first two attempts, Arcanine just didn't want to stay asleep. We have one gym leader to go, and I feel semi-confident, but that's only because we have Psychic. The biggest issue is our less than stellar nature for special attacks. With Giovanni, with the Rhyhorn, we put it to sleep, then take it to red. Knowing Giovanni will heal, we attempt a Silver Wind, not getting the boost, and then take it out next turn. The next Rhyhorn is up, and we put it to sleep, take it to yellow as it wakes up. It misses Scary Face, and then goes down. Doug Trio is up next, and we get a little confident. Attack it with Psychic, getting hit with Slash before taking it down. We put Nidoqueen to sleep, use Psychic, and as it wakes up, we take it down. After that, we put Nidoking to sleep, take it below half, get hit with Thrash, and then take it down to win the battle. That was a little bit easier than I would have thought. So, rival time. Pidgeot gets put to sleep, and we swap over to Psychic, taking it to not even half, but lowering its special. Another Psychic takes it all the way to red and lowers its special again, but it wakes up and wing attacks us pretty hard before going down. Rhyhorn is next, so we put it to sleep as well, using a few Silver Winds to try getting the boost and failing as Rock Blast takes us out. We do end up taking it out despite our lack of special effective moves with Beedrill, but then Alakazam just comes out and knocks us out. It takes a long time for us to be able to move on for this particular battle. We have two big issues, the first being Charizard, and again, Flamethrower doesn't miss. If we manage to take it down, we also have the Alakazam to deal with, and it's also pretty fast. So we do end up leveling up. Pidgeot is up as always, and we put it to sleep, spending all of our Silver Winds to try and get the boost. Pidgeot does wake up once during this, but we put it back to sleep and take it out with Psychic. Rhyhorn is next, so we swap over to Psychic, taking it out with one shot, and I'm not 100% sure if the critical hit mattered. Charizard is up after that, and we put it to sleep, and thankfully it doesn't wake up, going down to three Psychic. Execute goes to sleep, it gets pinged with Psychic. The second Psychic then lowers its special, and it goes down with a third. Alakazam is next, so we can put it to sleep, and take the gamble of swapping to Beedrill, as it stays asleep for two turns, allowing us to nail it hard with Twin Needle and take it out. Gyarados is up, and we swap back to Butterfree, putting it asleep and begin using Psychic, it only setting up Rain Dance when it wakes up, so it goes down, and we can finally move. With that done, we do take the chance after moving through Victory Road to grab any TMs that we could possibly need. We also make sure to stock up on at least a couple vitamins, and by that I mean use them immediately, and then we grab plenty of healing potions and make our way to the Elite Four. Lorelei is first. Dugong is up first, and we put it to sleep, then swap over to Beedrill using Brick Break twice, thankfully taking it out before it wakes up. Slowbro is up next, and we put it to sleep, and whittle it down to red with Twin Needles. Lorelei heals up. We take it back to red, and all it does is yawn, so we're able to take it out without losing any HP. Since Cloyster has the special defense of Paper Mache, we swap over to Butterfree, put it to sleep, and Two Psychic takes it down without much of an issue. As Jin comes out, we swap back to Beedrill, and a Twin Needle takes it down. Finally, it's out with Lapras, and we use Brick Break, getting hit with Confuse Ray, smacking ourselves, and getting hit with Surf. We Brick Break it to red, but the Berry takes it out of healing range. We then get taken down to 41 HP, but we can land one final attack, and that's the first battle. It always feels good when I don't have to spend an hour and a half fighting the same person over and over. Next up is Bruno, and we take down the Onyx with Giga Drain, though since we don't have any HP missing, feels like a little bit of a hollow victory. Hitmonchan, we put to sleep and use Psychic, which ends up taking it to yellow as its special gets dropped, and then we take it out next turn. 
Machamp is next, and we continue with the same process, taking it below half as the berry heals it up, and the next turn we can knock it out. Hitmonlee is up, and you guessed it, we put it to sleep, Psychic takes it to yellow, and then another takes it out. Last up is the final Onyx, and a final Giga Drain takes it down to win us the battle. Let's keep this victory train going, because next up is Agatha. Gengar is first, and we put it to sleep, using Psychic to take it to red. Knowing that Agatha will heal up, we chance a Silverwind, but sadly don't get the boost, and we put it back to sleep, trying to keep it out of any future healing range, and using Giga Drain before swapping to Psychic. Gengar wakes up and hits a Shadow Punch before going down. Golbat misses Air Cutter and goes to sleep, then we swap over to Beedrill and hit it with Return. When Golbat wakes up, it misses Air Cutter again, so we take it out without being punished. Next is Haunter, and we swap back to Butterfree, putting it to sleep and knocking it out with a critical hit Psychic. Next is Arbok, and swapping to Beedrill in hindsight was a bad move because due to the Intimidation drop, we can't take it out. We spend multiple turns hitting it, and due to the screeches it uses, Iron Tail drops us immediately. After that, we're forced to switch to Butterfree, and from there, it's basically, you guessed it, the old Sleep Psychic Strat, which does end up taking it out. Gengar is up and puts us to sleep with Hypnosis, then uses Sludge Bomb as we wake up and put it to sleep, taking it down two turns later, and that wins us the battle. Granted, it took ten attempts, but we still won. Now this is where a series of unfortunate events begins to unfold right before my eyes. While we remembered full restores to heal up any missing HP, we kind of forgot to grab any revives. I'm used to doing solo runs and nuzlocks where revives are either useless or just good for a little extra cash. Not that money is any type of problem in this game. So, rather than going back and fighting through the entirety of the Elite Four again, especially after Agatha, we just use a rare candy. For those that don't know, since level ups typically make you gain HP, even if your Pokemon is unconscious, it'll still gain a few HP back, so that's what we do before getting obliterated by Lance. For time's sake, we're gonna skip forward since I'm sure you know that two bugs do not stack up well against multiple dragons. It takes time after time, after time, and even some more time after that. The leveling takes us up all the way to level 80. When Gyarados opens, we immediately put it to sleep and swap over to Silverwind, getting the boost immediately. We spend some time putting it to sleep whenever it wakes up, obviously taking some damage in return. We have it down to yellow by the time we've used up all of our Silverwinds and then take it down with a Psychic. Dragonite is next and we use our last Sleep Powder, taking it to half. It gets an early wake up, but only uses Safeguard as we take it to red, and the berry heals it out of healing range, and then we can take it out. Aerodactyl's next, and we use Giga Drain, healing back some, and Ancient Power rocks us. But we can take it to red, and with the next Giga Drain, Lance heals up. Psychic brings it back to yellow, and then knocks it out. With that down, it's Dragonair next, and we begin struggling our little heart out because we are officially out of moves, getting paralyzed partway through, and taking it to red. When we finally go down and send Beedrill out, Lance heals up, but two returns are enough to do the job. The next Dragonair goes to yellow with return and only sets up Safeguard before going down and winning us the battle. Before the rival battle, we once again have to do the rare candy heal trick and use some elixirs to top off our power points and then go to fight our last battle. We start with Pidgeot, putting it to sleep and getting the Silverwind boost, bending the rest of them putting it back to sleep and it wakes up to take it down with a Psychic and Giga Drain. Rhydon is out and we switch to Giga Drain to heal up any HP that we may be missing and take it out. Charizard we put to sleep, take it below half, then to red as the rival heals up. We take it to about half and then take it to red and lower its special, then knock it out with a Giga Drain. With Alakazam we can put it to sleep, take it to red with two Giga Drains as the rival heals up. We can take it below half with Psychic then knock it out. After that, Executor is an easy 3-shot, only taking a bit of damage on our end from Egg Bomb. After that, we put Gyarados to sleep and get rid of the last of our PP before beginning to struggle, taking it down pretty far but ultimately getting taken out. After that, we can swap to our fresh Beedrill and knock it out with Return to win the challenge. The challenge was honestly a good deal harder than I expected. Overall, bug types are a lot of fun to do with challenges since they get a pretty decent set of moves. 
Having access to every single status powder is a lot of fun, though obviously we relied solely on sleep powder. As for next week, I'm not 100% sure. I think here soon we're going to be finishing up with at least first form Kanto Pokemon. Work has been crazy and streaming has kind of taken a backseat to make sure everything is taken care of. Join the Discord if you want to hang out outside of the YouTube-verse, and as always, if you liked the video, even if you didn't like the video, think about hitting the like and subscribe button, because it really does help me out. And until next time, everybody, peace out!